Welcome guys, I'm Ernest Chavez, and this is going to be my uh, first installment of uh, Titan Tales. So I have a couple questions that I get asked from uh, whether it be different forums of Reddit or Quora, and so from here I'm looking to answer those. Uh, the first one I, I, I'm going to address is, how many years does it, does it take to become a UFC fighter? Now, this is crazy hard to tell. I mean, the fact is everyone's different, some people catch on faster, some people are slower, but if I had to give a, a flat number, from when you start to when you become a UFC fighter, I would say 10 years. And here's the reason why. Uh, the fact is, if you do 10 years in any martial arts by itself, the same Muay Thai, then obviously you're gonna be awesome after 10 years of just constant training. Now, the thing with mixed martial arts or MMA specifically is, it's not that you can't just put yourself 10 years into that particular area. You gotta like dabble in all aspects. So you have an instance where, you know, you might go do Jiu Jitsu, practice one day, Muay Thai that night, boxing the next day, strength and conditioning the next day, and then you don't get back to Muay Thai training until then, until two days later. So this will take away from if you were on doing Muay Thai every single day, twice a day. So that's the thing, if you were doing Jiu Jitsu for 10 years, you most likely become a black belt. But because you have to learn so much, you know, it's hard to uh, say that you can become a UFC fighter uh, any, any, any shorter amount of time. Now you do have, a, and the reason, there's another reason why is, is the fact is if I do jujitsu, I'm learning everything from guard, half guard, side mount, top, bottom, everything like that. I'm learning tons of submissions, advanced techniques, and so on. And some of that, some of those techniques are like deep half. Well, deep half, there's no relevance for deep half inside MMA. In, in reality, I mean, the fact is you're exposing yourself to too many elbows, um, so you would have to weed that out. And so a lot of times when you're just doing all these different techniques throughout the span of like say 10 years, now. Mind you, this is not to say that you're not fighting after like the fourth or fifth year and getting more uh, experience under the, that stress and under the lights. But the fact is to, to become to that caliber where you think you're gonna be able to succeed inside the UFC, you would need to have a real strong baseline knowledge of all the advanced techniques and learn which ones to weed out. An example would be if you do boxing, then you cannot put your front, you can't point your front toe out. You have to be aiming it forward so you don't get so you're not susceptible to kicks. Same time you can't be moving, you can't be ducking too often because there's so many knees and kicks nowadays, it leaves you vulnerable. If you're doing tie, a tie fight, it's really hard to make the adjustment to the stance because that's the basis for all your movement and attacks. But however, you can't stand that tall. It does not help you, it does not bode well against a wrestler or someone who's big on jujitsu and, and grappling. So you gotta learn what styles to weed out or what areas to modify to be able to, to become that good. At the same time, getting experience on weight cutting, nutrition, um, weight cut, what I mean by weight cut is like if you do water weight cut, um, nutrition, um, you gotta learn your body and read your body how it responds after those kind of fights. Um, at the same time, the stress of like having fight week, fight day, moments before the fight, how to react and breathe and, and work with the corner uh, in between rounds. You know, you gotta figure out all those different things. You gotta figure out what the best warm up is for you. So all these different things you have to like get accustomed to before you can make it to that big show. And so uh, if I have to give the most flattest number possible, it seems the most uh, based in reality, I would say 10 years from the day you start training some sort of martial art and expanding out. So the next question now is, uh, what is the difference between UFC and MMA? And the most direct and immediate answer is nothing. I mean, if you're referring to the UFC, like the style of fighting that they're doing inside the UFC, that is mixed martial arts, uh, which is the acronym is MMA. So uh, nothing necessarily different now. If you're talking about what's the difference between cage fighting and like say just you mixing martial arts together to be the most tactical uh, for street fighting, that could be a little different. Um, but I'm assuming you're referring to the fact that uh, is UFC style fighting different from mixed martial arts and in the way people have have you know are teaching at the gyms right now there's nothing they're teaching you how to you know fight off a wall how to stand up how to grapple and submit on the ground um, how to use your kicks knees elbows all eight points <clears throat> so um, I don't think anything's different now if you're just you know expanding yourself from uh, Kung Fu to Jeet Kune Do to wrestling to Jiu Jitsu to all these different things then um, that can be a little different because street fighting is different from you know cage fighting um, however, I would say cage fight is the closest thing you can get to a street fight, uh, minus actually engaging in a street fight. Um, however, you know, as far as the, the question goes, there's nothing 
uh, if, you know, like I said, based on how you're, you're framing it, I don't think it's anything different at all. So, now, the next question is how much do UFC fighters get paid? So now this is also another one of those things that vary. Obviously, if you're a superstar like Conor McGregor, you're getting paid millions. Uh, you're talking like right in the beginning, low level pay. Uh, those start you off talking about 10 grand to fight, 10 grand to win. Obviously, with the opportunity to uh, get bonus, you know, bonuses such as that, you know, fire denied, knockout denied, things in that nature. Uh, also, uh, what they don't tell you, sometimes you get small bonuses, uh, maybe for roughly about like a uh, month and a half to two months after. If you did a good performance in general, they'll go ahead and send you out some money as well, like five to 10 grand, um, somewhere around the second month after your fight. Uh, this is besides the fact that they take care of you. I mean, they cover all insurance me and medical procedures. So, I mean, their insurance is awesome. You go anywhere, get the best treatment, uh, and they really take care of the fighters in that regard. Uh, so, uh, you know, if they have to quantify that, uh, me not having to have insurance coverage and having s some of the best insurance out there, um, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but, uh, you know, for sure, that, like I said, this is all only entry level. You know, I've seen uh, a couple of my friends inside the industry, you know, have got, you know, 15 to five, 15 to win, 20 to five, 20 to win, all the way up to 50 grand to five, 50 grand to win. So they obviously incentivize you winning more than, than losing. Um, however, this is a performance-based business. So um, what are you gonna do? But yeah, so that's baseline level, entry level kind of pay. I haven't seen anything lower than that. And the last question for today's installment is, uh, how do low to mid-level paid UFC fighters make a living? So this is a valid question as far as like, I think in the, in the previous question I answered, you know, how much we get paid per fight, um, assuming we win and we get small little bonuses and stuff like that. But there are a lot of things that people, that a lot of costs that get incurred. I mean, the fact is you might pay anywhere out between your management and your, your coaches anywhere from 25 to 30% when you're barely coming up and you finally get into that to that arena, you know, only after you fight for a while do you get the, the better deals, uh, 5%, 10%, you know, you really start minimizing how much cost is going out. But to barely get into that, to you know, to that uh, platform, yeah, you're paying out at least 30% between all your coaches and, and, and management company. So, uh, they do, there, there has to be supplemental ways that you make income. So, one thing is, Obviously, personal training. The fact is you've done enough nutrition, done enough workouts, you trained in enough areas where people want, you know, want to, your attention to, you know, they want to be taught by you to, to train boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, Muay Thai, uh, Jiu-Jitsu, everything in that nature. So sometimes they just want to get some weights done. They want to train just like MMA fighter and do the exact same regimen that you did, just as small, you know, obviously if not as strong, then you just tone down the weights. But for the most part, you're, you can, you can get a lot, that's a good source of income to do personal training. Uh, aside from that, and, and, and also just a note, there is time in the day, I mean, even if I do two workouts a day, you're roughly doing about four to five hours of a workout, uh, workout. you add, you know, you know, eating, and tomorrow, let's say just eight hours, I'm actually doing something for, for fighting, um, eight hours sleeping, I still got eight hours throughout the day. And, by, and then with personal training, you can make your own schedule, so it is very, uh, it's the most viable option. Other things are uh, sponsors. I mean, the fact is, the higher you get up down, down the, on the ladder, people want you uh, to, to represent them. A lot of times, I always tell people to start with small businesses, you know, just a $500 here, $500 there, will really add up from between 10 businesses. So you gotta learn to, to talk to them, negotiate some things out. Uh, you can tell them, hey, you know what, I'll, spon I'll put this sponsor, this logo is normally $1,500, but pay me $250 a month for six months. You know things in that nature where you're rocking things, and you can make all these small deals even on the even on the lower levels. If you're not in the UFC, but you're still in the higher end of the regional circuit, and you're a champion in some one of the promotions around the area, you can really get that working really well, and get that machine functional before you go to the UFC and really start making a name for yourself, and then start doing small little, uh, you know, uh, promotional things like where you go and like if, if you're a dealership, then when they have a dealership, uh, if you got sponsored by a dealership, oh, they have a little, they're having a car sale week. And if you're a UFC fighter, then you can get free, free sign, you know, sign signatures and things in that nature, autographs and things in that nature to kind of generate some good faith with them. And you know, things like that will really add up, but sponsorships are a big deal as well besides personal training. Everything else, some people do have eight to five jobs, 
which I find extremely difficult. I know I had an eight to five job before I started this whole process of, of trying to transition into a 100% full-time fighter and that was tough uh, for people to even enter the UFC and maintain that. It, it, I, I applaud them, that, that, that's good, very, very good time management. This is of course, assuming you don't have kids and girlfriend, all these different things that can add up. So um, yeah, that, that, that seems crazy to me, but there are people that do that as well. But uh, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for Titan Tales, the first installment of Titan Tales. Uh, thank you for checking it out. Until next time, see you guys out.